everybody, and welcome to Inside Out with Allie. I'm really excited about this guest. We are going to go deep today with Jess. We've got Jess the Love Coach, which is her name on Instagram if you're looking to find her. But Jess is a love and embodiment coach. Jess, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here today. So excited to have you here. So I met Jess in Tulum. Jess is all over the world, traveling to different places, born different places with her husband, who she's got the most insane, most ridiculous romantic story you've ever heard. And yeah, we got to meet at an event in Tulum and I met her, I saw her magic. I've been kind of just watching from the sideline as she's continued to grow her brand, grow her business and just kind of take over life with like full steam ahead and beautiful to watch. I'm really excited to have her on the show and have her share a little bit about her story and how she got into what she's doing and what she's creating. I would love to start with Jess is just tell me like what led you into the world of being Jess the love coach? Honestly, it's my life experience. My life story is what brought me here. And I spent a majority of my life really struggling with fear, guilt, and shame. I had a very low sense of self-worth and lacked a lot of self-love. And when I was 25, I was in a very toxic relationship and hit rock bottom. And that really sparked me to, you know, embark on a self-discovery and self-love journey. And then last year in 2022 is actually when I, you know, decided to launch my own business as a love coach. And the reason why that is, is because I know that what I've been through is not uncommon. There's tons of people out there who really struggle with these things. And I just wanted to be able to use my experience and the fact that I was able to overcome this. I really want to use that to be able to help guide and inspire others others. Beautiful. And just for the audience, like what kind of love are we talking here? What type of love coach are you? The relationship? Um, the personal? It's both. And that's why I chose just the love coach because originally I was working with individuals on a one-to-one basis. And now I've expanded into, you know, more relationship-based content. And it's really because I realized that when you struggle with fear, guilt, and shame, it can really hold you back in your relationships. And, you know, it's through our relationships where we have these mirrors that really bring these things to the surface. And so I chose just the love coach instead of like, you know, the self love coach or, you know, something with just self love in it, because I really wanted to be able to grow into doing individual things. And also, I really wanted to be able to expand into not just personal, but also into relationships as well. You mentioned that you hit rock bottom, you had some challenges. What were those? Yeah, so I spent seven years in a really toxic and abusive relationship with a narcissist. And, you know, when I got into that relationship, I had no idea that this person was a narcissist. I fell in love very quickly. And it took about five years into the relationship to realize that I was, you know, being emotionally and and mentally abused. And so for me, because I already lacked a bit of self worth and I already lacked self love and, you know, I didn't have boundaries, I was a major people pleaser being in a really abusive relationship like I I actually tolerated the abuse because I felt that I deserved it and you know it sounds a little grim but it's the truth you know and I I didn't know that I deserved better and I kept telling myself that I just needed to push through I kept telling myself like oh relationships are really hard relationships take a lot of work and you really have to push through the tough times but after you know five years of tough times you know I had to come to the realization that there's a fine line, you know, like, yes, relationships do take work and you do have to push through some conflicts. But if the foundation of your relationship is toxic and it's not healthy, there you don't need to push through that. You know, you need to actually like decide I'm worth more than this. And, you know, for me, when I hit rock bottom, I was at the point where I was waking up every day and I didn't want to wake up. Like I was just like, I hate my life. I had no sense of self-confidence whatsoever. Um, Being with a narcissist, you know, it was a lot of daily put downs, like being told on a daily basis that I was a horrible person, that I was a selfish person, um, you know, just constant daily name calling. And I really, you know, after so many years of that, you you really start to believe that. And so when I hit rock bottom, I, I just, I didn't like who I was. I didn't like my life. There was nothing. I wasn't doing anything. I didn't have any like close friends. I was very, isolated from pretty much everything that brought me joy. And so that was really like the biggest challenge. And then as well, like when I came to that point of I want to change, it was like, you know, where do I start? And I knew I had a lot 
of work to do. Um, and I also at that point didn't know how to leave the relationship yet. I knew that I needed to leave, but I didn't have the strength or the courage to, to do it. I didn't really know how to get out. And ultimately what did do it for me or like what my first step was towards one, leaving that toxic relationship and two, embarking on my own self-discovery and self-love journey was finding meditation. I don't really know exactly how it came up. I just, I knew that I was not only drowning in the negativity of my relationship, but drowning in the negativity of my own thoughts. And so I really thought that meditation would be like the first step because I, I just wanted to quiet my mind. Like I was just so sick of the toxic thoughts happening day in and day out that I was like, I think, you know, meditation could be the answer. <laughs> Meditation is such a powerful tool and it's beautiful because we talk about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and in the subconscious mind, that is actually what, what we can tap into when we are in meditation and in the unconscious subconscious mind, like that is where there's infinite possibilities. They talk, talk about that being like the connection to the quantum, right? The infinite. So it's so beautiful to hear in your story that you were able to tap into basically this, these infinite possibilities to then leverage those thoughts and turn them into a reality to create this life that you've now created for yourself after being through such a turbulent time. What a beautiful story. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and the good news is, you know, it, it's possible for anyone out there, no matter where you are in your journey, you know, there, there absolutely is a, a different future possible. And it's so true. And I think that it's very common for people to say, well, ever, they can do it, but not me not me. I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not capable enough. And it's not true. Like we have proof after proof after proof of like so many people who had those same thoughts of like, I'm not good enough to do this. I'm not capable of doing this. I'm not enough to do this. Like, who am I to do it? They still, they overcome it and they, they do do it. So it's really great to hear that you were able to turn such a turbulent thing into something so powerful that's now helping other people. So walk me through that a little bit. So you went through this turbulent time, you realized, okay, I need to fix something in this. You took the leap, you had the courage to make the changes. And then you decided, okay, well, this is something I'm super passionate about because I don't want anyone to ever have to experience what I went through. And I want to now turn this into my purpose. Like, tell me about that. That's such a brave thing to do and such an important thing to do. And part of the reason why we even did this podcast is to help people do what you are doing. After I started meditating and doing yoga, um, it actually still took me another two years to leave the relationship. I had to build a support system. I had to rebuild my own strength and, con and you know, courage. And I had to, you know, rebuild my sense of self. And then when I left that relationship, I just decided, like, it was 26 at the time. Time. And I was like, I'm 26 years old. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want in life. Like, I just didn't know anything about who Jessica was, you know? And so for 18 months, I went, I just dove into a self discovery journey. Like, I wasn't dating any of anyone else or anything. I was just working on the relationship with myself and spending a lot of time by myself. I did yoga teacher training. I worked with a bunch of sacred plant medicines. I was just like, you know, starting to travel internationally. And I was just doing all these things that I had never done before to discover, you know, what was underneath everything, like what was underneath all the fear, guilt and shame. And, you know, it wasn't until I was very deep into my journey that I recognized that a lot of what I struggled with throughout my life was due to fear, guilt and shame. And then when I was the day after my 28th birthday was when I met my now husband. And it was an amazing thing because we were both living in working in Costa Rica. We lost our jobs due to COVID. We actually matched on Tinder. He was the first person I ever met on a dating app or like anything other than just in person, you know? And so we got together and because we're both so passionate about relationships and both very passionate about like self-development and self-growth, we immediately started talking about like all of the practicalities of what we wanted out of life and, you know, what was our relationship like with money, with family, what was our idea of success? 
success like. We talked about all of our past relationships and we were engaged in six days. We've now been together for three years. And it's a beautiful thing because when I met my partner, like it's a huge part of my story of, of becoming a coach because before I met my partner, you know, I just dove into myself and I didn't want to get into another relationship until I knew that I had that really solid, healthy, loving relationship with myself. And when I met my partner, Cameron, he was one, like nothing, we had none of the same life experiences whatsoever. I had just come out of a very deep 18 month long spiritual journey. Like I was, you know, meditating, doing yoga, working with sacred plant medicines, like, you know, everything in my life was through this like spiritual lens. And when I met my husband, he is, was not, and still not is spiritual at all. But he is so passionate about self development. He is so much self awareness. And he is an amazing communicator and, you know, really embodies that self love. And, you know, he's never struggled with self worth. He's never struggled with boundaries. Like, I mean, it was like the complete opposite of what my life experience had been up until that point. And it was so amazing because what it did for me was it showed me the change, you know, and this is why relationships are so important. And this is why a lot of my work revolves around relationships because of the fact that I was able to see that I had done, like, I had really cultivated that love and I was really embodying that love within me because I was able to meet somebody who reflected that back to me. You know, it wasn't somebody who reflected back to me, like all the pain that I had been through or all the struggles that I had been through. I was able to attract, I mean, unconsciously as well. I wasn't looking for a relationship or anything, but I was able to find this partner who was a perfect match for me and who not only reflected back to me at the moment, the level of like love that I had for myself, but also be somebody that I could grow with continually. My partner and I, like I said, we've been together for three years. And since we've been together, both of our lives have just expanded. Like when we met, we were both living our best life. You know, we were both feeling like so completely whole and complete as we were. We were both like, yes, you know, we love ourselves. We love being in relationship with ourselves. And now we can like share life together and continue on our journeys, you know, together. And so since we've been together, both of our lives have been enhanced. And we were really focused on investments for the first two years of our relationship because we both just want to travel the world. And, you know, we don't want kids or anything. We just want to travel the world. So we thought, how can we sustain this ideal and dream lifestyle that we have? So we were really deep into investments. And after two years, you know, we learned a lot. We, we became very educated, but we hadn't made any money. My partner was still working his job as a skydiving instructor. So, you know, we, we were making money in that way, but we weren't finding much success in the investments that we were working on. And then last year, I went to four different investment conferences in a row. And I spent a bunch of time in the room with millionaires and billionaires even. And while I was there, I had a revelation basically where I realized that there was no difference between me and these extremely wealthy people other than the dollars in our bank account. And it was a huge like breakthrough for me because I, I truthfully, I did struggle a lot with limiting beliefs, especially around money. And that was like kind of the relationship that I was, you know, I had worked on the relationship internally with myself. And at the time last year, I was really working on my relationship with money. And so it was this amazing thing where I just, I had this breakthrough where I realized like I can be financially successful and I can create what I need to create in order to to keep living my, my dream lifestyle. And so what really did it for me was, you know, being around really successful people and, and recognizing that I had a lot of the same skills and that I definitely have the same amount of value and worth to give the world. That was the biggest thing is that I was like, I actually have a lot to offer the world. And it is possible for me to have an exchange there where I'm sharing what I want to share with the world and, and be able to help people and have that sustain my lifestyle. And so that was really in about July of last year was when I 
I had the idea, okay, I want to start my own business. And because I was like, I'm sick of putting my success in someone else's hands. Like, you know, I know that I have a lot to offer and I know I'm really hardworking, you know? And so I was like, I want to start my own business. And I've always wanted to help people. I love people. And, you know, I've always known throughout my whole life, even in moments when I was so lost, I knew like, I'm here to be of service. Like I am here to be of service to humanity and I am here to share something so deep with the world. And for honestly, like until last year, I didn't know what it was. In fact, when it comes to purpose, that was something that I actually did struggle with a lot. Even when I, you know, embarked on my self-discovery journey, I felt like I, I really want to know what is my purpose, you know? And what really came to me last year when I had this big breakthrough was realizing that my purpose lied in my challenges the whole entire time, if that makes sense. Like I, I had this realization that like, wow, everything I've been through in my life that has been so painful and such a struggle and has just like broken me down at times, like that was my purpose. Like my purpose was to endure those things and to overcome those things so that I can support other people who are going through that right now. And so that was really how I decided, like, I want to become a coach. I know that what I've been through is what so many people are going through. And if I can share inspiration and hope and love with people, you know, like really realizing, like, you know, the reason why I, why I was like, I want to be a love embodiment coach is because I have so much love in my heart that I'm like, that is my purpose. You know, my purpose is to just be love and to share love and to, you know, just bring love to the world. And that is my burning passion. That is what my heart bubbles up with every single day. My morning mantra is may I show up today with love, integrity, and humility. And that's really like, to me, that's my purpose. That's my passion. That's my mission in life is like, how can I just walk around as this like glowing orb of love? You know, like, I, I just want people to feel love, you know, like, <laughs> I think that's so beautiful. You just gave me a joke. <laughs> so important because you being that light you're just creating more light you're creating this ripple people who come in contact with someone like you who is this just energy this beautiful radiant energy it attracts more people and it increases their energy and their vibration and then they get to be a ripple right even if it's just a little bit like you have a good interaction with someone you're like wow and that lights you up right you have a little bit more light to share and so it's a beautiful thing to see you creating this ripple effect of love, which is ultimately the highest, the most high, most beautiful energy, the ultimate energy. You know, you brought up a really good point yes. around, you know, struggling with your purpose and not knowing where to go. But what's interesting, obviously you had your rough patch, right? But after that, you were in your 18 month discovery period. You're like, I don't necessarily know what, what my purpose is, but what's interesting is it was literally right under your nose because you were always like in that space, you had found yourself love, you knew it, but it was like, it's so close, but yet so far during that exploration process. This is one of the, one of the concepts I always think about and talk about because there's a lot of people who can relate to that where they're like, oh, like I really want to do something. I want to do my purpose, but I don't know what my purpose is is so what would you say to somebody who's in that boat who's saying hey like yeah like i i don't want to do the nine to five job that's sucking you know my life force energy away i don't want to do that it doesn't get me excited i feel numb and i do want to do something that makes me feel alive but i don't know what makes me feel alive like what do they do how do they what's the first couple of steps they can take honestly i, I would say the the key is risk. And it sounds interesting. And, and I'll explain what I mean by that is we allow fear, like so many of us for so many moments, you know, we allow fear to keep us stuck. And in order to discover like, what is that we have to step into the unknown, and we have to be willing to take that risk of, you know, that risk of failure, that risk of, of not knowing, and you just have to ask yourself, like, really, like, for me, you know, it's like, I put I put all my attention on my heart. And I just say like, if nothing mattered, like if I could just like, you know, I mean, there's lots of like the 
the cliche thing, if money didn't matter, you know, what would you do? But like, it's a, such a true thing. Like I put all my focus on my heart and I just say like, what absolutely lights my heart up? Like, what am I so passionate about? And then like, you want to go after that. And that's where that risk comes in. Because at the beginning, you're not really going to know. You know, when, when I started this business, I had no business experience, like none. And I just said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it because this is what I want to do. And like, this is what I'm passionate about. And I'm going to learn along the way, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. But when you really want to follow your dreams, like there's going to be risk involved, there's going to be you're going to have to push past that fear. And you, you really have to like, you know, let go of the ideas of what's comfortable. I mean, truthfully, I I've never done it. I've never worked the nine to five. I've always worked, you know, I worked in the restaurant industry. I have done lots of strange jobs, but like to me, you know, when you're stuck in the nine to five, it's kind of like a habit. Like habit is just based on repetition. And when it comes to changing habits, you have to work with the unconscious mind, you know, and you have to rewire the brain. You have to create new neural networks. And it's the same with leaving your nine to five job and going after something you're passionate about and, and going after your dreams. Like the nine to five is just the pathway that you've built with repetition. And so you have to just start rewiring the brain and creating new neural networks. And the way that you, the way that I start to do that anyways, is by starting really small. Like what are some things that you really want to do, but you're really afraid to do it? Just go and do that. It doesn't have to be quitting your job right now and going after your dreams. But like as far as steps go, you just want to start small with those little risks so that you can get comfortable with coming up against that fear and being like, I'm going to be okay on the other side. What is just one little thing that you really want to do, but you're kind of afraid to do it? Just do it, you know, like, and I know that's, I know that like, maybe some people might think that's like a little annoying, like, like, well, of course, if I just did it, I would, you know, if I could just do it, I would do it. But like, you have to push past that fear, you know, and you just start small, because the thing with starting small, like, this is what I tell my one on one clients all the time as well, like when it comes to changing habits, which is a huge part of like your self love journey, because all these negative thoughts, all the toxic thoughts, all the beliefs that you have about yourself, they're habits. And they just get, you know, the more that those stories get looped, the deeper that habit becomes. And so with this, it's like you want to start small because say there's something, let me think of an example, like, well, I don't know, I'll say skydiving, you know, since my, my partner is a skydiving instructor, like say you, you really want to go skydiving, but you're so afraid to do it, you know, and then you go skydiving and then you land on the ground at the end of your jump and you're like, holy cow, that was so scary. But here I am standing on the ground. I'm totally safe. I'm, I'm okay. And that was really scary and really exhilarating, but I'm okay. And and like the more that you can practice that, the more that you can practice coming up against your fears and pushing, past. you know, here's another really small example. Maybe, maybe it's just expressing yourself or maybe it's being seen, you know, maybe you're afraid to share your truth online or something like that. Like just do a short story where you share something that's really vulnerable and that can be so scary. You know, it took me a long time to get comfortable being vulnerable online. And now I love it. That's what builds connections. You know, that's what's building the relationship with, with the world out there is through vulnerability. So I would say like, if there's something that you really want to share and tell the world, but you're so afraid to just share it on a story, you know, it only exists for 24 hours. But after you do it, you're going to feel really proud of yourself. And you're going to be like, okay, you know, that was really scary, but I pushed through it and I'm okay. And the more that you go along that journey of pushing past the fear, the more ready that you'll be like, okay, I want to quit my nine to five job. And I want to go after my dreams, you know, like I want to create my own business. I want to be an entrepreneur. Like, like, I want to make money doing something I'm so passionate about. The more you practice that that courage and that bravery, and the more you can push past the fear, the more when you come up against a really scary thing, like quitting your job, you know, that brings you so much security, the more you're going to realize like, this is just another opportunity for me to learn and grow. This is another opportunity for me to step into my power and my capability and it's just such a good feeling when you reach that point, you know, where you really realize that like you can achieve anything, especially going after your dreams. So well said. There's two things that came up for me. So number one, all of you viewers out there who are like, yeah, I want to take the plunge. And yeah, like everything Jess is talking about is resonating. I've got those things that are kind of scary. We're inviting you all to jump on the challenge. And after you finish this podcast, go online and do a quick video, 60 seconds or less 
with a vulnerable post, put yourself out there. Again, as she mentioned, it's all about rewiring the brain and creating new neural pathways in the mind to help you start getting in the habit of like taking action. Mm -hmm. And that really is so valuable what she said. It's about taking action. So we're putting you on the spot. Don't overthink it. Just say, yes, Allie, Jess, I'm in. We're doing it. After you finish this podcast, you're going to go online and you're going to tag us. Tag us if you can, because we want to see the action. So tag just the love coach and inside out dot traveler. And I'll put that all in the bottom in the, in the notes. So we would love to see you take action because again, it's these little baby steps to start building the habit that are going to allow you to take bigger steps and then bigger steps because it becomes more comfortable. Mm -hmm. This is so important. I can't express it enough. And I'm so glad Jess brought it up. The other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we talk about that quitting the job and, or taking that big jump or taking that big leap. And it's so relatable for me because when I quit my job four years ago, I mean, it took me four years to get the courage to make the jump. I was listening or not listening. I read the book four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. This book is so good. Jess, have you read I this have, book? I have. Yeah. It's very good. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is lethal. It is a lethal book. And it is, I put a caution sign on it. If you don't, if, like, you don't want to risk having any change in your life, then don't read the book. <laughs> but like, it turned my world upside down. And I'll remember one of the things that it talked about, it was like, hey, why are we waiting till we're 65 years old to then retire, to then have free time, to then go explore and travel the world? Like, would you want to do that when you're 65? Do you even make it to 65 or do you want to do it now? And it was this huge light bulb that went off. And I, I thought, yeah, of course I want to do it now. But I've been so conditioned to think that I need to wait till then. Screw that. I don't want to wait till then. I'm doing it now. And again, it still took me even with like hearing that and it, it completely clicking four years to quit my job. And I really had to muster up the courage like, because before I jumped back into full work, I, I took some time. I, I traveled for a year and a half, kind of similar to Jess's story, just to explore and see what did I like? Who am I? What are my passions? What do I care about? Where do I want to live? Do I even want to live in New York? I hate winter. And every year I'd be like, oh, next year is the year, but I was too scared to take the leap. So finally taking that leap, I mean, that was the most transitional, most transformative decision I've ever made in my whole life. And it was one of the scariest, but God, was it worth it. But one of the things that I told myself when I made that decision was that, hey, there's always going to be a job. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a job to have. There's not always going to be time when you're, and for me, your circumstances will be different. But for me, it was, I'm single. I'm not broke. I'm not in debt. I'm 30. I'm never going to be 30 in this part of my life again. So if not now, when? And I didn't want to take the risk that it might not happen because I knew in my soul that at 80 years old on my deathbed, I would regret that decision by not taking the leap. I love that so much because that is when, when I was 16 years old, I was a t like my high school had this program where I was able to go to college when I was 16. And my sociology instructor was this tiny little fiery old, like, you know, I'm not old, but I mean, she was like 70 something years old and she was just of this little tiny ball of fire. And she, at that time, like I was raised in a very small, small town, very small minded, small town. And this woman had traveled a lot. And she, I had no sense of like energy or anything back then. I had no sense of like a spiritual energy, like nothing like that. But when I was in this woman's presence, I just felt her wisdom. And I vowed to myself at 16 years old that when I was her age, when I was 75 years old, I wanted to be able to look back on my life and say, I did everything that my heart desired. Because I knew that by doing that, I was going to have that that wisdom, you know, like, and I knew, like, I knew in that moment, like the only way to get that particular type of wisdom that I felt from her was through life experience, through traveling, through taking risks, through exposing myself to things that were uncomfortable that I didn't know about. Like I had no sense of like consciousness going on in my mind at this point, but that's what I knew. And it was because of the fact that she was the only person I'd ever met at the time who traveled anywhere. And she just had this energy about her that I could not shake. And I, that was like when I vowed to myself, like, I'm going to have no regrets in my life. I literally, I have a tattoo that I got when I was 18 years old 
that says, live life, take risks, regret nothing. (laughs) And it's really true. Like you want to think about yourself when you're older and say like, what would my older self think about the life that I'm living right now? You know, that's actually a really good like meditation exercise to do is like picture your yourself old and gray and wrinkly and ask your older self, what would you say about my life right now? You know, what would you say about me continuing to live this comfortable life? Or what would you say if I took this risk? What would you say if I took this leap of faith and, and tried something new, you know, and really visualizing like, what do you want your older self to say? Do you want your older self to say, oh yeah, you know, I, I lived a pretty basic, comfortable life. Or do you want your older self to say like, oh my God, yes, I live the sickest life ever, you know, like I, I pushed past fear. I, I had connections. I, I took chances, you know, like, of course you want your older self to be so stoked on your life. Like (laughs) that's what, that's what I always do. Anyways, I think about that. (laughs) What a good metric to check in on. It's really easy to go through the motions and be like, yeah, it's good. But ultimately, one of the best things, one of the things that I preach as well, just like you, is it's really checking in with yourself. And it's not up here. It's not a mind thing. It's not a thoughts thing because this gets us, we have like 70,000 thoughts that go through our mind in a day. And it's us choosing which ones we want to connect with. Yeah. But this isn't a mind thing. This is a body thing. The way to check in on this is tune into your body. Mm-hmm. Like you know instantly what you actually feel about mm-hmm. things. So for example, I'll just use like my last serious relationship was a relationship that was really good. There was a lot of really great reasons why that person was awesome. And I had to be honest with myself, check in with my body and I could feel while I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was, wasn't a full body. Yes. And I was, it wasn't a full body. No. And so a lot of us get stuck in there where it's like, we're kind of like, Oh, like indecision, but you know, because it's like, okay, for my ice cream lovers out there, I'm like, you want some strawberry ice cream, plug in your flavor, favorite flavor, you know, on a hot summer day when you haven't had food in a couple, couple hours, you're like, yes, ice cream. Let's go. I'm in. Right. It's a full body mess. You know, you don't have to think about it. You feel it. If it's not that, if you're not feeling that level of excitement, like, and you're in indecision, usually that means it's enough. Yeah. 100%. And so checking in onto different areas of our life, is this a full body? Yes. Or is it a no? Is it a full body? Yes. Or is it a no? And then we can little by little start to clean the house, get rid of the things that are not serving us to create space for the things that will, for the things that will light us up and make us so excited and make us love our life. So side note. <laughs> yes, I love that. First and foremost, I thank you so much for being on the show. It has been such an honor, such a gift. You are such a light. You have so much knowledge to share, so much wisdom to share. And I want the viewers to be able to find you. So how can they find you? Like, And also, like, how can they connect with you? How can they work with you? Give us the 411. Yeah, so the best way to find me, of course, is Instagram at Just the Love Coach. And there's so many ways that you can work with me um, and connect with me. So, you know, one, obviously following me on Instagram. Um, I pretty much, po- I've been posting one reel a day, um, every day for the last like four months. Um, I am launching a course right now. So I've scaled it back just a teeny bit on the daily reels, but still amazing value coming out every single day. You can subscribe to my weekly emails. I call them the love letters, love letters from Jess, where, you know, there's no spam or anything. I just share love and truth and insight, lots of, um, you know, life experiences. You can really get to know my life story through my emails. You can subscribe to my Instagram, you know, if you want to, you know, get your questions answered in the DM, you want to get some like behind the scenes with our content creation we share bloopers with our subscribers like it's just a more fun light way to connect with me and then lastly we're actually about to launch the most amazing course ever it's called the everything you need to know about relationships course and it launches next month and i'm so excited because i've taken everything that i do with my one-on-one clients with self-awareness self-acceptance and self-love and taken that one and put that in the course but then expanded into 
all the other relationships in your life. You know, we go over communication, we go over, you know, understanding yourself, we go over mindset where we break down like the myths, like the societal ideas and the myths that we have about love, which are really holding us back from having really healthy and fulfilling relationships. It's an eight week course plus six months of live mentorship and then lifetime access to a community which is going to be the sickest community ever. We're actually going to have like quarterly virtual meetups where you can have the chance to really connect with each other on a deep level, support one another. You know, everything that I do in my work, I talk about the importance of community and having a support system. And so I'm really excited to co-create with everyone in the community, a really strong support system for everyone. And so, yeah, those are all the ways that you can connect with me, work with me. And yeah, if you're listening, you know, stop on by, drop a, drop a hi in my, my DM. I, I love chatting with people and, and meeting new people. And yeah, I'm so grateful to be here today. Thank you so much for having me on, Allie. Of course. And yeah, guys, like what she's offering, these skills, some of the most important things you can learn. Some of you might be like, oh yeah, I, I got my communication down. Even the best of the best communication experts still have something to learn. Communication is one of the keys that unlocks so many doors to so many different avenues in our life. And that's just one of the many things she's touching on. Oh my gosh. Sounds amazing. Thank you again for being here. Thank you to all of our viewers for supporting and listening in. And so we hope you have a great day and that's it with Inside Out with Allie. Thank you.